okay guys today's topic of discussion is uh, the male hormone that is testosterone and we will discuss this under biosynthesis mechanism of action functions and its regulation and also we will discuss some of its clinical part and the applied part so without any delay let's get started okay look over here see in exam uh, this part is often asked as a long answer question they will ask you explain testosterone under biosynthesis mechanism of action function and its regulation usually it is divided into 4 plus 4 plus 3 plus 1 this pattern or under 12 marks or 15 marks section they won't ask you such a layman question like what is testosterone define testosterone they won't ask but you need to mention about it a bit so testosterone is the male reproductive hormone secreted from the leydig cell as you know and chemically it is a 19 carbon compound it has total 19 carbon and it is synthesized from cholesterol ester how it is synthesized we will discuss it later and also remember that it has it has a hydroxyl group in the 17th position of the carbon chain okay and its daily secretion amounts to about 4 to 9 mg it's always in mg 4 to 9 mg per day now let's move on to the biosynthesis of testosterone as you know it is formed from cholesterol esters so cholesterol is the precursor and then cholesterol is converted into pregnenolone this pregnenolone has two pathway let's first discuss about the primary pathway pregnenolone takes uh, is converted into 17 hydroxy pregnenolone in presence of 17 hydroxylase then further it is converted by 17 20 lyase into dehydro epiandrosterone dehydro epiandrosterone is dehydrogenated in presence of any dehydrogenase in true androstenedione this androstenedione is converted into testosterone and further uh, it is also converted into dihydroxy testosterone which is known as dht with the help of an enzyme 5 alpha reductase okay this is one part another path is pregnenolone may change into it is also converted into progesterone and this progesterone is further converted into androstenedione then again the same path continues okay one thing to remember finasteride this is a drug finasteride is used to inhibit 5 alpha reductase activity so in case of benign prostate hypertrophy or any kind of disorders related to testosterone uh, where dehydro testosterone is involved we can use finasteride to inhibit this production of dht so it will help in preventing many diseases and also help in curing it this pathway which you see from pregnenolone to androstenedione via progesterone this pathway is an alternate pathway okay it might come in exam mention an alternate pathway for production of testosterone so you need to mention about this pathway okay let's move on to mechanism of action so testosterone as you know is a steroid hormone so like all other steroid hormone it can easily pass through the cell membrane it can pass through the cell membrane and combines with the intracellular receptor you know receptors are two types one is the extracellular that is present uh on the cell membrane outside the cell and another is intracellular so steroid hormones passes inside the cell and it binds with the intracellular receptors and a hormone receptor complex is formed then the hormone receptor complex binds to specific region of dna which influences transcription of mrna and finally protein is synthesized and that protein is used in various metabolic activities like uh physical development of body structures and parts and all those now another important part which comes is the functions of testosterone so it has 
two types of function one which is related to reproduction and another that is anabolic function so first we'll discuss about the functions that are related to reproduction it is con uh, divided into three stages in fetus that is in fetal stage then during puberty and post puberty phase okay so in fetus testosterone is formed at the seventh week of intrauterine life you have studied this earlier and it is responsible for sex differentiation of the male fetus you know that testosterone uh, helps in development of the wolfian duct which give rise to male organ such as epididymis vas deferens seminal vesicle and all those so at puberty during puberty what happens testosterone causes growth of the external genitalia and also accessory sex hormones uh, accessory sex organs in pubertal stage and it also causes the appearance of all the secondary features of the males and post puberty what happens testosterone along with fsh is necessary for spermatogenesis these two hormones this and fsh these are the primary hormones which helps in uh, spermatogenesis essential for mobility and fertilizing capacity of the sperm secondly one more thing under the influence of testosterone wolfian duct develops or differentiate into epididymis vas deferens and seminal vesicles and the other hand dht that is dihydrotestosterone it helps in it promotes the differentiation of the genital tubercle into prostate the external genitalia the urethra and the scrotum that means all the external genitalia are developed from dht and the internal ducts that are abdominal or below the abdomen all the ductular system is developed from testosterone and also one more thing it helps in maintenance of accessory sex organs or the ducts that carries the fluids now let's move on to the anabolic functions anabolic means sum up to summation and catabolic means breakdown so it helps to gain things like it increases the synthesis and decreases the breakdown of protein so it increases the muscle bulk secondly it causes epiphysis to fuse with the long bones epiphysis of the long bones are fused together and it also favors calcium deposition and one more thing is there that is retention of nitrogen potassium ions and phosphate ions okay so now these are the functions of testosterone so we are going to study about the regulation of testicular activity this is often asked as mention the hormonal influence of spermatogenesis or mention the regulation of testicular activity anything it might come as a short note so first of all you need to give a diagram let's look at the diagram you can pause and take a screenshot of it so if you give a diagram such a simple line diagram or a schematic diagram this will help you to fetch more marks okay so the regulation of testosterone from leydig cell during fetal stage is caused by hcg from placenta after birth its secretion is absent till adolescence and during adolescence it start again under the influence of gnrh from hypothalamus gnrh is secreted and gnrh is a neuronal hormone and it passes to the anterior pituitary and it helps in stimulation of two hormones that is fsh it allows it actually allows the anterior pituitary to release two hormones that is fsh and lh fsh act on sertoli cells and sertoli cells in turn releases inhibin and estrogens and also fsh helps in spermatogenesis and lh act on leydig cells to produce testosterone testosterone and fsh means the estrogen which is secreted from sertoli cells these both these two together helps in spermatogenesis it has positive effect and at a point when the level of testosterone and other hormones are uh, high enough in the body so they need to be regulated so they are regulated by 
negative feedback that is inhibitory feedback testosterone inhibits LH secretion and testosterone also act on GnRH and it gives a command the level of testosterone has rise enough in the body and also inhibin that sertoli cells releases inhibin this acts on uh, this is actually a negative feedback this shows negative feedback for FSH secretion so this is how the entire hormone is regulated